our next interview is with Claudia Schulson, who is an important autograph dealer. And I'm going to ask you, Claudia, like I ask everybody else, talk to us a little bit about uh, your, your youth, how you grew up, what your parents were, did, siblings, uh, college, etc. A little biopic. My biography, I'll, I'll do it as quickly and as succinctly mm -hmm. as, as I can. Um, I was born in Buffalo, New York, and grew up in, on Long Island, and went to George Washington University with a major in history. My love for historical autographic manuscripts began there. And then I went on to graduate school after having taught history in high school for three years to try to train teachers um, with the idea that if you know the past, it's that famous quotation uh, from um, John, I don't want to get this wrong. I won't even, can we edit this out? No. no. Okay. Um, that <laughs> um, <laughs> that um, I will quote Shakespeare um, from The Tempest that what is past is prologue. And so to know the past is a necessary ingredient in knowing what your present is and what you can do to influence the future. Um, and then I taught uh, and trained teachers for many years within City University. And then when um, my late husband David began this business, I joined him in writing catalog and in also expanding it beyond art and literature, which were his specialties, into music and science and women's studies. Do you have any siblings? I have uh, one brother who was born with cerebral palsy. And what were, what did your parents have, what were their jobs? Their uh, jobs. My father was a mechanical engineer, mm. a graduate of Cooper Union, and uh, eventually began, started his own business, um, making very interesting specific machines for companies that needed to do something very specific, like cut chicken into eight parts without making a mess of the chicken. Mm. Um, or point. staples that, mm. you know, surgical staples that would... Uh, not uh, disintegrate once they were in the human body. So he, had, he was very creative and um, mathematical whiz. Um, and my mother was a housewife. Typical did, stay at home, very nice were, housewife. Did your parents, were your parents uh, college educated? My father. Just your father? Yes. As an era when women didn't really go to college. I and suppose. my father went to Cooper Union and worked. It was during the Depression, so yeah. he went to night school for six years and graded, graduated actually valedictorian of his class and then worked for the Navy Department during the war um, and had the most amazing war stories at the 50th anniversary of the end of the Second World War. Wow. Um, tell us when you met David. Um, met, uh, what was it, about 72 or 3 or 4, something like that. In the mid-70s, we, we met through mutual friends. And, was it a uh, fix-up? Sort of, yes. <laughs> you know, sort of planned, let's sort of a, like yeah. from a distance, let's yeah. see. Yeah. And uh, a lot of phone conversations and uh, shared an interest in uh, good food and good restaurants and cooking. Um, and um, we made pumpkin pies together. On our first date, we went to buy the pumpkins at a farm. And then we made pumpkin pies fresh and decided never to do that again. It, yeah. um, it wasn't particularly good, and it was a lot of work. <laughs> um, and that really, in a way, was one of the themes of our marriage, was good food, good restaurants, and cooking. In addition, of course, to more intellectual <laughs> pursuits. When did, uh, when did uh, the business begin? What was the year? Um, it's a little hard to remember exactly, because it began slowly, part-time, when David was teaching. We were both teaching. Um, and then he left teaching, and I was still at City University, and to do this full-time, I would say 70, 78, 79, something like that, maybe early 80s. My first child, my son, was born in 1980. So it was around in then that it became full-time. How many children do you have? Two. Uh, boy, girl, boy? Yes, boy, girl. And they are... In college, or oh no, uh, they're older than that. Thank you oh. very much. <laughs> um, my son I is <laughs> no, I take it as a compliment. Um, my son is almost thirty-four. He's oh a God. film director. He's actually here. He just surprised me. Oh really? That's Came in great. from California. Yeah. To see mommy. Yes, because <laughs> over the years they have been here at this book fair. This has been traditional with oh, us that the yeah. two of them are here. Yeah. Um, and uh, my daughter is about to be twenty-eight. She works for an internet startup. Uh, she's the buyer for them, and um, 
she has been helping me doing special projects uh, in the business. Okay, and now where are you located? Right now, I'm in New Jersey. Uh, the business for many, many years was in Manhattan. Yeah. First, uh, first around Madison Avenue on 64th Street, 68th Street, then 34th Street, and then when um, my husband became ill, we moved it to our became ill. Is that what I said? Yeah. Yes, we moved it to our house, and I've been working uh, really from from our home. We have two offices there since then. Okay, talk talk a little bit about uh, your internet experience. Uh, do you have a presence? What, mm -hmm. what kind of a presence? Mm -hmm. uh, do you do a lot or a little? Talk a little bit about your experience with the internet. I would be happy to. Um, I know that it's controversial, and my general experience is positive. Um, we have a website that is in the process of being redesigned so that we will interface with um, the various other social media sites. So. I'm aware that that will make an even larger difference than our presence yeah. just with our own website has right now. And we also use the platforms from the ABAA and ABE. Um, and um, I think that's probably, the, so we're looking to expand what we do and we have certainly found new clients, they found us. It's been positive all around. Yeah. How big a stock do you maintain? Uh, a big one. So our presence on the internet and our reserve are, are not the same. Our presence on the internet represents what we have. It's not our full stock. Not, not the full stock. That's right. Do you issue catalogs? Absolutely, yes. How many do you do a year or, or what? And this is part, my answer is part of the impact of the internet on the business. So mm -hmm. we used to issue only print catalogs. They went from six to four, now it's two. Because I have been in the past two years issuing PDF catalogs as well. Yeah. So the print catalog now includes the PDF catalogs, um, and then they go to print so that the print catalog will, for example, this one now that's out, has um, three of the previous PDF catalogs plus new material. Um, and then the PDF section that's new material went out to our email clients. So th that's, the, that's your, main, uh, your main sales venue is your catalogs and the internet. Correct. Uh, does, do, do you do many book fairs or just a New York one? Yes, New York. I have been contemplating California. We used to do California, whether it was San Francisco or Los Angeles. And then we stopped because it was a lot of work and in the, the, uh, it, it, we would have to leave the office. And so we mm. would lose more business than we would make. Yeah. And I haven't really picked that up again. Um, and so I do, this, I do this fair, and I also have joined PADA, Professional Autograph Dealers Association, and do their fair once a year. Where do they have that fair? Well, it's been moving, so this year it's at the um, Hunter College li uh, lobby, so it's close to this fair. Yeah, very close. Right. When, when does it occur? <laughs> Coincident with this on Sunday. Oh, I, right. So, so you have to be in two places at the same time? Exactly. Well, that's a good trick. I'll it's an excellent trick, yes. <laughs> yes. So I have four, we're, there will be four of us on Sunday, so well, we'll divide it. Yeah, you, you And it's separate it. material there than from here. Well, that's good, that's yes. good. Um, th these are my questions. Yes. Sometimes I use them, sometimes I do. Okay. Um, the autograph business is different than the book business, and um, I'm a bookseller, not an autograph dealer, but when you started in, the, in doing this, you and David, uh, did you have some kind of a master plan or some kind of a business plan? Or did you just get in there with your feet and move Kind on? of. What happened was that for different reasons, we both had an affinity towards manuscripts and letters. For me, um, my doctoral research was on a biography of Mary Wollstonecraft. Hmm. So that got me into all sorts of her letters and the letters of her contemporaries, as well as her books. And I found that in that research, you know, reading the letters, touching the letters, looking at the different editions of the book was, I lost the world. I was just yeah. in there with the letters and it was a sort of a time traveling experience. Um, you know, David's probably was similar, but in other areas, he had a, a, a very much of an attraction for the beats. Yeah, and had like an too. appeal for the beat, you know, beat letters, manuscripts, in a similar way. And we didn't even talk about books versus mm. autographs. It was just yeah. a natural appeal that the, the letters and manuscripts had for each of us. So no, no business plan. We just sort of, sort of yeah, went with our heart. Yeah. And this was around 1978? 
End of the 70s, early 80s, mm -hmm. yeah. That's that's when we were sort of, you know, following. And then there were older autograph dealers, well-established autograph dealers, who, you know, mentored David and uh, we had lots of conversations with to learn the business and see how could our particular interests uh, fit in with the more classic um, repertoire of autograph dealers and autographs. Who were some of the autograph dealers that um you were uh, just referred to. Well, Paul Richards for one, um, Charles Hamilton, um, Altman's. Uh, Charles Hamilton, right. That, I mean, David had that relationship with Altman's, you know, yeah. that was for all of us, was a, I mean, it was a beautiful space to be in. Oh. And for me also, it was um, the rare book rooms uh, in different libraries, the British Museum, Columbia University, that's where I did my graduate work, and the special uh, collections rooms there and their stacks I could live there. Yeah. It was wonderful. It's, uh, I don't know, how do you impart this emotion that we have for what we do to other people? I don't, I don't know how you do it. I think if you find a similar spirit, it clicks. And if you don't, it doesn't. It doesn't. That's, and that's it. Yeah. You're, you're into that spiritual stuff. Huh? Not spiritual, <laughs> but, but it's, a, it's an aesthetic. You know, you know yeah. people, people find you because there's a shared aesthetic. Um, or there's, even if it's a shared intellectual interest, it's got to go just a drop deeper than that. I've got one guy in Canada who calls me twice a day in the morning and the afternoon to find out if I have anything new. Every day. Oh my day, gosh. Every day. But, you know, he spends a lot of money, so I... Yes, yes. But it's, it's kind of interesting. Yes. I mean, these, there's so much passion. As one of the uh, interviewers before said, we have so much passion for what we do, and it's good passion. It is, and sometimes somebody who starts a little tentatively, not sure, um, will pick that up. And you can uh, direct them because they ask for that direction. But I think one of the influences of the internet is that that is what's getting, gotten lost, unless then the internet connections or the connections through an email turn into face-to-face -face meetings or phone conversations, because I think there has to be that personal contact for that passion to really uh, be active again. Well, you know, you're in a trade, a part of the trade. You're dealing in autographs, you're dealing in manuscripts. We live in a world where people are using their iPhones and their iPads and their computers to get in touch with people, and there is no autograph on that. Yes. Uh, do you find, you finding that the, the amount of material that's going to be available is going to be shrinking? Well, of whom? Um, the classical material will be classical material. Right. People who were writing w w that material will obviously still be around, or will the the um, the repertoire of that is going to shrink as it would anyway. Yeah. And I think for current, let's say current writers or current um, artists, then how do they communicate? What will be the record that they will leave? Mm -hmm. And my guess is that that whatever that record is is what people will collect. So you still think that there'll be uh, autographs and manuscripts available? In some form. I mean, for an artist, it might be a sketch. It yeah. might be um, pieces of paper. I'm not quite sure. I don't think that paper is going to go away. I think that, and there might be printouts of, uh, I don't know, um, emails. I'm not quite sure. But I think that there's going to be something that people will want to have of the um, person that there's a, a, an attraction for. So you, you uh, are sort of saying that perhaps someday emails are going to be worth something. Um, if not an email, then maybe. I don't know that emails will be. I don't know how they will be because it's all digital. I don't know what yeah. form that would take. I don't know either. What I'm thinking about more is, for example, preliminary sketches or scratch notes or uh, maybe something that was out of somebody's collection that they wrote a little note in, that that might have yeah. much more significance than, for example, it does now, because there are the letters. Well, there somebody's are the shopping letters list, now, for example. But, you know, I, I you know, wonder how much longer. See, what I think is going to happen is that the, 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 um, the individuals that people have an interest in, I mean, autograph buying for the way that we do it is essentially biography, um, and that you're going to be able to collect the letters of people who have left records. If they haven't left records, then the people who have left records are going to be the people who uh, collectors will, te will collect. What are, what, are, what are your choices? There, are, there yeah. are no choices. Um, when you first started in the trade, uh, do you have any like, fond memories of uh, meeting people or handling something great? And 
Uh, yes, I have two. One happened last year, as a matter of fact. Oh, pretty recent. And uh, yeah, and one was many, many, many years ago when we were on um, 68th and Madison. We had we had a document, letter signed, of an Italian Renaissance woman artist, of which there were very few, Artemisia Gentileschi. And this was remarkable because my interest was in women's studies and there's this letter and I said, no, please, let's keep this. Let's hold on to it. No, let's sell it because it's quite remarkable. So we eventually did sell it. But the having of that letter was absolutely exciting and we showed it to as many people as we could <laughs> before, we, before we let it go. And last year, you know, as I said, the, the Pata show and the show coincide on the Sunday. And there was some publicity for the Pata show. I had my catalog out there. And while I was here, I got a call from my assistant who was there because somebody had seen a Renoir that I had and was interested in it. And I gave him a ticket. He came over here and he bought it. He must have been maybe 80 years old. I'm not wow. quite sure. And he said that um, he, this is as close as he could get to the Impressionist. He had tried to bid at a, for a painting at an auction, missed it. And, then ha and he was in Paris. And they had to leave and that was that. And this many years later, he saw this in wow. my catalog and came over, and then he sat down with me at the booth and told me the entire story. Wow. So I spent about a half an hour with him. That was so heartwarming. I was, and I said, well, would you like to be on my mailing list? He said, no, what for? I have what I want. This is yeah. it. I have my own one. That's it. Yeah. yeah. And I just, I just love that. I was sitting in Max Hunley, who you probably never even heard of, on Santa Monica Boulevard many, many years ago, and Groucho Marx opened the door, walked in and said, I have a book, closed the door <laughs> and left. So I I can, I can relate to, to the story that you just told. Um, oh. There's a, a lot of questions that, that people are asking right now about the future of the book trade. Yes. Uh, there are some dire predictions and some doomsday predictions, and there are some people who are very positive. Uh, how do you feel? Well, I'm basically optimistic. Um, and so that carries over into what my, my view is. And I think that this is not going to disappear. I think that the book, manuscript, autograph, map, it's really an interest in antiquities, um, more re some more recent than others. I, maybe antiquities is a little bit strong. Maybe that has a particular date attached to it. But there's an interest in the past. There's an interest in history. I don't think that that's going to go away. I don't think so either. But um, how do you get young people uh, interested in autographs and autograph collecting. Is there a, a procedure or? I think you try. I think we're all trying. I think we're yeah, all yeah, trying. Everybody's trying. And I think, you know, f for my specific experience, it's through my kids' friends. So they always bring their friends and they show up. So this year they'll show up. Some of them will show up today. Last year, a lot of their friends came through. Whether that will mean anything, I have no idea. But it's in all I can hope to do is introduce people. Once you expose people to something like this, there's either a positive, mm -hmm. neutral, or negative, mm -hmm. and you're hoping it's positive. And that's the most, you know, in a way, we all are educators. True. And what the, the actual um, uh, concrete effect of what we do, we don't know. And all you can do, as you say, all you can do is influence, is see, is let someone know what this is and show them that this is a possibility and I think be upbeat and positive about it. And that's part of what gets picked up, that this is, this, is, this is a good thing, this is a happy thing, this is going to give me pleasure in my life. And then you go from there. It's the most you can do, I think. I also think that there seems to be fewer autograph dealers than I can ever remember. <laughs> I, I agree. Which, I agree. Would, which would, I don't know if it's a positive or a negative, but if there are fewer of you, uh, that means there are fewer to share what's coming down the line. But at the same time, if there are fewer of you, it doesn't mean that you're going to get the kind of expansive publicity, et cetera, that you would have got if you had like 40 of you. However, however, <laughs> there was a period when there, were, uh, there was an expansion of autograph dealers, especially into sports and current yeah. celebrities. And we were very worried about that. But that would harm be. all of us. You should be worried. Yes, and a lot of them have just gone away. And yeah. so that has helped us all. And so on the one hand, you know, there's more opportunity. There are fewer people to compete with. Um, the expansion of the autograph, of autograph fields, I think, has gone. Um, it's more global now. And I think that you really have to have quality material. And if you don't, you're going to be found out pretty quickly. Do you buy at auction? Yes. Uh, and do you buy private collections as well? 
not collections, small, usually individual pieces or a group of, uh, for example, an archive, but not large collections anymore. Why? I have too much material. Yeah. I have enough, yes. No, nobody has too much material. Well, I, uh, you it, maybe. it becomes a space issue. Okay. <laughs> where, where am I going to put this? Okay, let me just move some of this and then I'll go search for more, yeah. Uh, moving is such a terrible thing. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, I want to talk a little bit uh, about the world we live in today as far as education goes since you're a former teacher. Do you really feel like when kids are going to school and college that they're exposed to any of these wonderful things like autographs and books? Because when you go into a library, all you see is a bunch of kids with laptops and with iPads and you don't see any books. Um, I understand what you're saying about the tactile feel of a book yeah. and that that's a loss. But I think then that if there's an interest either in subject matter or an interest um, in book arts, not so much the way that we might have learned about books as something that you actually open and read it, but in, in terms of an art form, a way of human expression, um, coming at it from a different uh, angle, I think that um, that there are people who will have, younger people who will have that interest. I think maybe it's fewer, I'm not quite sure. Um, my sense is that if there's an interest still in um, Jack London, for example, or Ernest Hemingway, or Gertrude Stein, or Virginia Woolf, where, that where there's that interest, there will be the interest in those books. So my sense is that the interest first has to come from the subject matter rather than the object itself. And I also think that film is a way in. Oh, really? Yes, I do. Explain. I absolutely do. For example, that very awful remake of Anna Karenina last year. It's a shame oh. it was not a good movie, but yeah. nevertheless, it was Anna Karenina. That's yeah. terrific. Um, there are suggestions in this latest film of Wes Anderson, The Grand Budapest Hotel. Yeah. Fabulous film. But there are literary suggestions in there. Um, let me just see. And I think that, well, years ago, the film Reds, about John Reed. Yeah. Very interesting. Okay, so we haven't have we've we've had John Reed letters. Who's John Reed? That name became no name as a result of that film. So mm. that's how I think film will it helps us. It will also help, I think, the book trade. I was told that John Reed is the only American buried in the Kremlin. Okay. Yes. And, and uh, the story is quite interesting. Well, you know something? We are almost at the end okay. of a little session. Is there anything else you want to expound on or talk about or, or say for a minute or two about the world we live in, the book selling world, the autograph world? Well, I think of this particular book fair, this is the 54th, yes, book fair, antiquarian uh, autograph, no, antiquarian booksellers association of America. It's at yeah. the 54th book fair. From the crowds here, Thursday night, the opening, Yesterday, Friday, which is very often a very dead day, yeah. um, and today, it is very, um, very positive. It gives me a very good feeling. No, oh, good. I'm glad you have a good feeling. I do. <laughs> I do. Yes. Claudia, thank you so much. For thank being, you, Mike. Thanks for participating. Absolutely. Enjoy my pleasure. It.